Well, progressive leaders are attempting to shift the blame now for the high price of gasoline away from President Biden and now onto the oil companies. Watch this. I mean, we, we go after corporate America because corporate America is often profiteering. Um, if you look at the data around this, when prices went down, we didn't see any of that passed on to consumers. When prices go up, we see that passed on to consumers. So there's no consistency. Meanwhile, Republicans launching several voter registration drives at gas stations across the country, the first of those taking place in Arizona on Saturday. Joining me right now is New York Congressman Lee Zeldin. He is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and he is currently running for governor of New York. Congressman, it's great to see you today. Thanks very much for being here. Great to be with you. So uh, the oil industry executives are invited to the White House today to talk to uh, the administration about the high price of gasoline. Uh, you could only imagine what they're going to say, uh, given that soundbite we just heard from one member of the squad. They are blaming profiteering of the oil companies for this price. Your thoughts? There are certainly people in the Democratic Party who need a bit more of a remedial education on how prices are determined, what's causing it to fluctuate. Uh, the decision was made strategically with bipartisan support to cut off Russian oil imports. The decision then was made by the Biden administration to move towards Iran and Venezuela to make up for that as opposed to using this as an opportunity to look at our own domestic energy policy, our own domestic energy production. This is an opportunity and a reminder to ramp that up, to become energy independent again. There is a lot to talk about at the table of ways that the United States internally, within our own resources, uh, can be tapping safely into supplies uh, that would help drive down energy costs, create jobs, it would allow us to be energy independent, uh, physically secure, economically more secure. Uh, so we should, one, do that remedial education for anyone at the table who needs it, and two, uh, is get to this next step of tapping into our own supply. So, Congressman, look, Governor Cuomo also cut out any ideas of drilling in New York. He was against it. You're running for the governor of New York. Uh, you've got that issue. You've got crime rates that are skyrocketing, COVID mandates, all major issues in the race this year. The state GOP picked you to be its nominee. Tell me about the campaign and where your priorities are. The campaign's going great. A poll came out a week ago that actually has us up by a point and a half over Kathy Hochul. We're confident that we have a strategy and plan to actually win this race. We're not in this race to come in second. Uh, with regards to the conversation we're just having on energy supply, you're right. Andrew Cuomo uh, banned this safe extraction of natural gas. We sit here in New York on the Marcella Shale, on the Utica Shale. We have other states tapping into this same shale for uh, their own supply. We as a state can become energy independent and drive down costs and revitalize communities. Crime is certainly a top issue here in the state. There's a strong drive to repeal Castle's bail, to fire district attorneys like Alvin Bragg, who refused to enforce the law. Uh, mama bears uh, who prioritize their son and daughter's education above party loyalty might have been voting Democrat in the past. But they don't like the message that's coming out, discouraging them, discouraging them from being as involved as possible in their son and daughter's education. We have the issues on our side. We're working hard. The polling's good. Fundraising's great. The volunteers have been coming in from across New York. We're going to win this race in November. Well, then you've got to hope that people come out to vote, right? I mean, look at what happened in the New York City election for mayor there. It was the smallest electorate that came out. And as a result, uh, you had Bill de Blasio. So how confident are you that you can get voters on their feet on Election Day? There's a huge enthusiasm gap right now in New York in favor of Republicans. Uh, people are excited about being able to uh, take back their country, take back their state this November. We're seeing a little bit less enthusiasm for people who more loyally yeah. Uh, vote Democrat. So that's a key factor. But the, the fact is this, it's not about jumping on a surfboard and riding in a wave. It's about for the next seven and a half months, working hard, taking nothing for granted, all in everywhere. Everyone who's tuning in from across America, if you care about your country, your local government, 
You can't just expect everybody else to, to do the hard work. You got to participate. Here in New York, we're seeing a lot of enthusiasm and activism yeah. that very much works to our favor. Yeah, you know who else is tuning in? The former governor, Andrew Cuomo. Apparently, he's telling people he's open to running again for governor. If he's back in the race, what does that mean for you? Uh, listen, selfishly, it helps. The margin of victory only increases with Andrew Cuomo on a third-party line this November. Unselfishly, he should be as far away from politics as possible, and he's lucky that he's not inside of a prison cell right now. All right, Congressman, we will leave it leave it there. Lee Zeldin, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. We'll be watching this exciting race in New York. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back.